In this video, I will be demonstrating several ways to customize version 7's toolpaths and toolpath generation. First, I'll hit the open button and navigate to my part. Toolpath manipulation is done in the cam module, so I'll push the part over there now. Take a look at the toolpaths generated by default. This default toolpath would result in a perfectly good cut, but I can also change the toolpaths to match my exact needs. The first thing I'll add is corner loops. This option can be found in plasma settings. This parameter lets me set how version 7 handles corners in toolpath generation. Sharp corners are selected by default, but I'll change this to triangular loops and then hit the green check mark. You can see that the toolpath has updated to include these new loops. I decided that I don't want this larger angle to have a loop. I'll reopen plasma settings, then change the maximum angle to add loop to 120 degrees. Once I hit the check mark, my toolpath is adjusted as desired. I also want to begin my cut at that corner, so I'll click and hold the diamond shape breakpoint indicator, then drag it into position and release. I want to use an arc leadout instead of a line, so with the breakpoint already selected, I'll go to the break parameters panel and select arc for my leadout. That arc's a little too big. Using advanced lead in and lead out editing, a new feature in version 7, I can click and drag the leadout's handle to place it wherever I'd like. I'll hit the check mark to accept it. I'm happy with the perimeter cut, but I would like the hole cutouts to use an arc lead in with a longer overburn. I'll click the breakpoint, change the lead in type to arc, drag the handle near the center, and change my overburn distance. Then I click the check mark to confirm. I'll do this for each hole. The new drag and drop advanced lead editing is an extremely intuitive way to manipulate your toolpaths. Now you can see that the cut will start near the center, lead into the breakpoint, make the cut, and overburn past the breakpoint. I also want to add a tab to this large cutout so it won't fall at an angle and get in the way. Once again, I'll select the cut's breakpoint. I'll change the break type to tab and keep the default width. Hit the check to regenerate the toolpath, then I'll change my leadout to a line and drag both leads off at an angle. Now, my toolpaths are precisely how I'd like them. Because I found myself making so many changes to the default toolpaths, I'm going to customize my break strategies for future parts. To demonstrate these changes, I'll close my drawing without saving the toolpath adjustments. I'll open my configuration menu and navigate to Breaks under Cam. Here, you can change your default break generation to your liking. I'll enter in the values that will automatically produce toolpaths similar to the edits that I made. Once my custom break strategy is set, I'll click Save As and name this new setup, then hit Save. Now, I'll reopen my file, and then push it into the CAM module. You can see that by using my custom break strategies, version 7 has replicated the changes I made beforehand, saving me design time. By using these features to fine-tune your toolpaths, you can elevate your production from good to exceptional.